What's going on, everybody? This is Brian Mazik. I'm a fight guy, a Forbes contributor, and I also write for Heavy.com. And we are powered by Fight TV and presented by Bet Online. Going over every single fight on the UFC Fight Night, Jessica I versus Cynthia Calvillo card. In the event that you are just watching this particular fight prediction, make sure you look at the end of the video. There will be a link for you to look at every single fight or every single video associated with this card. So without further ado, let's jump right into the breakdown. All right, the main card, Jordan Espinosa against Mark De La Rosa. So we got a lot of Osas going on here. Mark De La Rosa is the husband of Montana De La Rosa. Been in the UFC for a while. Uh, he is a grappler, loves to get it to the ground, uh, work his submissions game. He usually has an advantage when he gets there. Of course, he was submitted by Tim Elliott, I believe, in his first fight in the UFC. And Jordan Espinosa is a powerful guy. Likes to strike, would prefer to strike, as a matter of fact. Uh, and he has run into some issues when the fights that he's been in have gone to the ground. Uh, Espinosa is, uh, it, it has fought at, uh, fly, uh, at, at men's flyweight. This fight has taken weight at bantamweight, which is somewhat of a factor here. You, you could see Espinosa fighting in a situation where now maybe he is uh, more comfortable fighting at 135 maybe the cut was was too much for him uh maybe this is is a good thing for him i, I think he's a better overall athlete than uh than de la rosa i feel that even though he has lost two fights in a row i mean both of these guys are coming in really really needing a victory Jordan espinosa has lost two in a row i believe de la rosa has lost three in a row um they're they're both they both have their backs against the wall these both of these guys are guys who that if they get an l today or if they get an l on saturday they might get a you know, an email in next that says that they've been released from the roster. So, uh, uh, you know, interesting enough, both of them have lost to uh, Alex Perez, who has proven himself to be pretty elite in the uh, in the flyweight division. Um, so this is this is an interesting fight. Uh, like I said, De La Rosa is coming off a loss to Alex Perez, Kai Car Franz, Raleigh and Pava, in which that was his last fight back in February. And he was knocked out in the second round. Espinosa lost to Perez, but he also lost to Matt Schnell. He was submitted in both of those fights. So when you look at the fact that De La Rosa's uh, strength is the submission game, and that also appears to be Jordan Espinosa's weakness, we clearly know that Espinosa needs to keep this fight off the ground. He cannot afford to let it go there. He has to keep it standing and he's got to do good work there. If he does, if it does go to the ground, he has to be able to stand up. He's got to be able to do it. Uh, if he's, if he's not, uh, you know, if he, if he stays on the ground too long, more than likely he's going to get controlled down there and probably submit it. So the question then for me and anybody else who is then, who is considering where to go with this. Uh, is where do you think where do you see this fight being contested at? Espinosa is a minus one sixty favorite according to Battle Line, which would suggest that the odds makers believe that Espinosa will keep it standing long enough to get it done, and De La Rosa is a plus one forty underdog, which kind of tells you where they are there. I'm intent. I'm inclined to agree with the odds makers here. I just don't think that De La Rosa will be able to close the distance, be able to avoid danger. In route to trying to get in to, to uh, take Espinosa down. As good as De La Rosa is uh, from a grappling standpoint, I don't think he's as good a wrestler. I know he's not as good a wrestler as Alex Perez. I don't think he's a, as good overall as Matt Schnell. You look at some of the people Matt Schnell's fought uh, and even beaten, you, you have to have a little bit more respect for him. So even though Espinosa has these two losses, I think they're definitely more respectable losses than some of the people De La Rosa has lost to, especially in his last fight. So I, I'm going with Jordan Espinosa to get this victory by a second round stoppage. I'm thinking it's a second round TKO. Uh, I think he catches De La Rosa, uh, maybe even hurts him in the first round and gets it to finish done in the second. Uh, I think he's the one that gets off the schneid in this fight and pushes himself uh, up to a point where he can avoid the cut line. De La Rosa, I think there's a good story there with him being uh, the spouse of another person on the roster. But um, I, the Bantamweight division is, has become so competitive and so exciting again in the UFC. And it's weird because you lost TJ Dillashaw completely because of the EPO, uh, you know, substance issues. He'll be back soon, soon, I believe. I can't remember exactly when, but he should be back soon. Henry Cejudo just retired. We'll see how long that lasts. So you had two of the, the last two champions have left 
but it has seemingly gotten to be a more of an exciting division thanks to Sugar Sean O'Malley, uh, you know, and and Cody Garbrandt's resurgent, amazing knockout at UFC 250. So it's an interesting division, and I don't I say all that to say a guy with a four fight losing streak like Martin De La Rosa who hasn't looking who hasn't looked promising if he loses this fight, which like I said would be his fourth in a row. I think he puts himself really dangerously close to that cut line. So we'll see what happens. But I got Espinosa getting the victory.